I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about I have to be honest with you. Well, honesty is so important in relationships, communicating with each other, being on the same page, right? Now, listen, you don't want to overwhelm people with honesty because sometimes it could be a lot, right? You have to kind of gauge the other person and what they can handle or not handle and not put yourself in a situation where you're like walking on eggshells, but you also don't want to overwhelm somebody or, you know, come on so strong that they can't take it in. They become defensive because it's not easy to hear complaints about you. It's not easy to take criticism, right? A lot of times our natural reaction is to defend ourselves, explain ourselves. So honesty and talking about things, talking about our issues is good, but I think it's better in small doses, right? So neither person becomes overwhelmed, right? I got a good email coaching today that talks about communication and honesty. And sometimes it could be difficult to tell somebody something that you know is going to hurt them even after a relationship, right? So this coaching is from a guy in his early 30s, okay? And they're actually the same age, the couple. Um, they were together for about a year and a half and he said we both lacked communication. So if you don't communicate with each other, eventually you just become more and more disconnected, right? Because Communication is one of the major ways that we connect with our partner. And so you need to be able to listen. You need to be able to verbalize or express yourself. And both people need to be able to do that. Otherwise, you just wind up disconnecting. Uh, that powerful chemistry that you have kind of fades away or loses intensity, right? Now, he said we both were very anxious with each other. And what does that tell you? Right? Like I talk about in some of my videos, anxiety causes us to become self-absorbed. When we're anxious, we're not able to listen to what the other person wants or needs. We become controlling, manipulative, focused on our own self. We become selfish, self-absorbed um, because we're in this almost state of panic and despair. And so we can't think about the other person we're caught up within ourself. One of the big reasons you have to work on your issues. This is why I have workbooks. This is why I did the creative healing course, right? A lot of these coaches do get your ex back guides. And I laughed at those for years. I was like, I couldn't see myself ever doing something like that. You know, I had like 500 videos out before I even developed the first series of the knowledge workbooks because I was like nothing lined up with what we're trying to do here until I kept thinking about how we have to work on ourselves. What does that mean? What do we do? What does that look like? And so I slowly developed this eclectic series focused on how to be a better partner, working through your own issues, um, learning to communicate better, learning about your attachment issues, working through your own attachment trauma, and then, of course, with the Creative Healing Course, I mean, that was just an in unbelievable amount of work and effort. If you guys have not looked at it, go take a look at it and just see what's inside. You'll be really impressed with all the cool stuff that's in there. But, it, you know, I did a lot of work. You know, when I tell you guys to do the work, I spent years and years and years doing the work and trying to figure this stuff out. It wasn't like I just read a book one day and it was all there. No, this came through 
trial and error and seeing things and patterns and issues keep coming up. But if you have two anxious people that are both self-absorbed and they're not really understanding the other person, how are you going to communicate? How are you going to connect? Okay. And they were about to move in with each other. As he says right here, we're about to move in with each other. Okay. So that would be really scary. That's a big step, moving in with somebody. A lot of times, taking a big leap into the next step of a relationship, one person gets scared and they panic. Uh, she had an abusive ex-husband prior to us dating. Now, another thing is, how long were they separated? How long ago had she been divorced before he started dating her? That's important. She may have not worked through those issues and gotten into a good place. I suggested a therapist since she couldn't talk about it and I didn't want to push it. Okay, so that's another big red flag right here. He's suggesting therapy, good for him, uh, but she couldn't talk about it. So now she's got all these unresolved traumas that are going to keep coming up over and over again until she deals with it. He didn't want to push it, but what he probably could have done differently is removed himself a little bit and said, I really want you to work on this stuff before we do something like moving in together. This is a major step. And I'm concerned that, you know, you're not ready. I want to see that you're ready. Okay. Not long after her therapist told her to end our relationship. And she said she needed to do it her way. Okay. This is concerning. Her therapist told her to end our relationship. I don't know if I believe that. Okay, it could be true, but that's not how therapists are supposed to act. As a coach, we give you more of strategies and, and ideas to follow and, you know, things like that. But as a therapist, you're working with the person and allowing them to work through stuff, you know, with you. Not telling somebody you need to end that relationship. Now, he says, and she's needed to do it her way. I don't know... If she means the clinician is saying that you need to end the relationship and do things my way, because that would be even more concerning if a clinician said that. Um, we're taught very early on in grad school, we're not supposed to tell people what to do. We don't live with the consequences. And even with my coachings with you guys, I often tell you, this is what I would do in your situation. And I'll tell you guys, I don't like to tell you what to do, in a sense, because you have to live with that decision and you're the one that have to, has to deal with that. And so I tell you what I would do in that situation um, because I know how to navigate these things, obviously, right? I've seen them every day. But I don't like the fact that she has a therapist telling her to end the relationship, but it could have been an excuse, right? The therapist maybe didn't say that and maybe the girl, the ex-girlfriend here, used that as an excuse so she didn't have to tell him what was really bothering him and just said, oh yeah, yeah, the therapist said I had to do this. He says, it hurt more than anything. I had thought, but I was sincere. We were off and on like two separate times through our relationship. So that tells you something was going on there, that they were on and off a couple times. We had always talked about the issue, then moved on. She would try to run from her feelings. So maybe she has more of an avoidant attachment style, even though she's anxious, she may be more avoidant in the relationship. I wasn't in no contact over the past four months. She would respond off and on. Okay, so instead of saying, listen, I, you know, give me a call. If you change your mind, we can get together and see how it goes. He kept trying to reach out. I'm not sure, maybe he was watching one of those coaches that say, be friends with your ex or something like that. But what happened? Over the course of January, she quit responding. I'll tell you the first thing I thought when I read that, she's probably more interested in somebody else. Um, I don't know, I, I just have a gut instinct for these things when I've been doing this for long enough. Lo and behold, Come Valentine's Day, I reached out. Now, mind you, he, she had already stopped responding sometime in January. I reached out. She responded saying, this pains me more than anything. I have to be honest with you. I'm seeing someone new now. I didn't go looking. Every text hurts me. 
I have nothing but love for you. I needed time for myself. It was the right person, wrong time sort of thing. Okay. I like that she's showing some empathy and compassion for him here by saying, you know, this is hard for me to tell you this. I, you know, clearly she can see that it's hurting him and it's hurting her to text him this. Um, though I'm not so sure I buy the whole, I needed time for myself. How much time did you have for yourself if you're seeing somebody new already? Uh, couldn't have been that long. It was the right person, wrong time sort of thing. So I was the right person at the wrong time, but now you're with somebody else this quickly? It just feels a little bit immature and doesn't quite line up with what her clinician said or didn't say. I don't know if I buy that. At that point, that's when I really fell apart more than anything. The whole crying, puking, not eating, shaking, you name it. Yeah, and I've been there. It's awful. I sent the whole long text begging and whatnot, the whole nine yards. I was beating myself up and I've started no contact. It's really, really tough knowing that she's already dating somebody new too. So that, that makes it even worse. Over the months of our breakup, I knew I was doing her wrong. I was letting my anxiety get the better of me and pushed her away. Okay, interesting. I didn't want to ever do anything. I was stressed from work, not going well. Oh, he was stressed from work, not going well, got it. It just compounded on my emotional and physical intimacy. So now he's saying I was stressed, I wasn't emotionally connected with her, I wasn't physically bonding with her, and now I feel guilty about it. She struggled with her past abuse and her mom would run off and leave her and her dad. Okay. So she's seen a lot of unhealthy relationships and she's been through abuse and she's got to work through those things. Then come back like nothing, meaning the mother. I was always torn between choosing between my parents. I was the black sheep of my family. Margaret loves the black sheep of the family. Uh, we talked about that recently in a video. My mother would make me try and choose her over my father. So I bonded more with my grandparents. So he's been through a lot too, right? I lost my grandmother in 2013, then watched my grandfather wither away from heartbreak and cancer for the next five years. So he's been through a lot of trauma and grief and sadness. And so this is going to all compound together. I have felt guilty and grieved since then. I never felt like I did enough. Well, we all beat ourselves up after a breakup. And if you had broken up with her, she would have been the one beating herself up after a breakup. And we lose sight of that uh, when we're going through it. But, you know, had you ended the relationship, she would be doing the same things. It's just the way it goes. So, I think I've been battling depression our whole relationship and beforehand. Yeah, you probably were with all the grief and uh, losses you felt. They compound, they drag you down, and it's hard to work through it. I've been bettering myself by letting my feelings out to my parents, not bottling things up. As soon as my strength is back, I'm going to start exercising again. I've known for a while I needed to take my, make myself better from, okay. I've known for a while I needed to make myself better for myself. And that's great. And I hope you to keep continuing to do that and stay on that path regardless of what happens with her. And that's not easy to do, but you really have to make it your goal. So I guess my question would have to be, is there any hope for me to salvage this or has she gone? Okay, well, at this point, you got to leave her alone. She's in a new relationship, and obviously she thinks it's going to go well. Most of the times, new relationships don't last. 
I don't know how much of a rebound this guy is when they started talking, but, um, you know, it's still very early, and so leave her be. Uh, continue to work on yourself, continue to get to a good place, and see if she reaches out. If she does, you got to take things slow. You want to make sure she's in therapy still, and I'd want some answers. Not right away, of course. I'm not going to try and pressure her, but my... You know, question would be, I don't understand, your clinician, your therapist told you to end our relationship and do it her way? Or meaning, her, th her therapist told her to end the relationship and that she, the girlfriend wanted to do it the girlfriend's way, not the therapist's way. I'd want some clarification what that meant and how the ther therapist felt when you started dating someone right away. Because it just seems like you're not getting the full story here. And she was kind of giving you some mixed messages in January. So she was probably dating this guy and talking with you. And so you were thinking maybe we're going to get back together. But really she was just pursuing that new relationship. And then didn't tell you until Valentine's Day when she was finally like, I got to tell this guy. So I'd want to get more information on what she was thinking and what she was feeling. And take it really slow because... If you rush this and you're quick and eager to get back with her, it's again, more not communicating, not finding out what's going on, no real honesty. And I think that it's really important, especially with you guys where, you know, it's just like there are so many pieces missing here and I'd want to know what those pieces are before I'd pursue her again. In the meantime, Work on your own communication skills. Look at the areas that you've struggled. Work on those things and try and improve them. Um, and see what happens if she reaches out. I, mean, I don't see any reason why she couldn't reach out. Especially if she partially believes uh, that you were the right person at the wrong time. That means that she could think at some point... Well, now our time is better and you are the right person for me, right? So there's some kind of hidden meaning going on with the beliefs in her unconscious there. So maybe she'll see it as you could be the right person at the right time at some point. Leave her be for now. Work on yourself. And hopefully you guys have found this video helpful. Of course, if you want to get my help personally, you can do that on my website, AskCraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype, but that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and I will talk with you soon. To get my help personally, go to AskCraig.net and click on Schedule Coaching and choose the option that works best for you. I do email coaching or Skype. To schedule a coaching with Margaret, click on Margaret on the top of the page and order a Skype with her. For the Knowledge Creative Healing course, click on the link at the top of the page and click Get Started Now.